What's up everybody? Tommy and Nate here with Bare Knuckle Recovery. Uh, so we've got a couple of things we're gonna talk about today. Um, the first thing, Nate's gonna talk about um, cross addictions, backup addictions, replacing one addiction or substance with another addiction or substance. Um, that's something that we see happen pretty often. I know I've done it before, Nate's done it before. So yep. that's what we'll talk about first. So a lot of people get into recovery and um, as Tommy's going to talk about, they come in to just quit drinking or getting high, right? Um, and in that process, and Tommy's going to touch more on this later, but what people develop oftentimes is another addiction to, typically it's a behavior or a thought pattern. Um, you know, number one, addicts and alcoholics are very impulsive. So a lot of times these uh, behavioral addictions end up being impulsive behaviors. Um, so, so what, 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 like Nate, so what's an example? So people may come in and they quit drinking alcohol and they quit using drugs. But, uh, you know, one thing that we've seen a lot of people get heavily involved with to the point where they're actually having similar repercussions in their life to, as to when they were using drugs and alcohol is sports gambling. Um, you know, people using things like DraftKings, uh, the MGM sports book, and there's nothing wrong with those things in measured doses, but the problem is, People begin to obsess with it about it because the, you know one of the things people say when they come in is okay well um, I'm just going to stay so busy with my hobbies that I'm not going to think about getting higher drunk and what they don't realize is they're taking the place of their alcohol which they were dependent on for serotonin and dopamine in their brain which is all addicts and alcoholics are addicted to at the end of the day is serotonin and dopamine that's what makes us all feel good right. So what they start to do is find hobbies that give them a similar feeling of pleasure uh, that would they would that mimics uh, taking drugs and alcohol. It may not be quite as intense, uh, you know. Obviously, winning a sports bet is not the same as shooting heroin, but you could get a similar response in the brain. So people will spend all their time, uh, you know, looking into sports bets, betting, you know, and just like where people get a high from going and picking up their liquor or going and finding a bag of dope. Uh, going and finding their next uh, rock of crack, whatever it may be, right? Um, they get a high off of going to make their bets and, and researching it and then deciding to place the bet and picking, you know, am I going to take the money line? Am I going to do a parlay? What am I going to do? Um, like I said, these are just things that they're, they're exciting, just like living a life of somebody who is addicted to drugs and alcohol, right? Like some of us aren't just addicted to the substance, but we're addicted to finding the drugs, going to get them, uh, the lifestyle involved with it, the cash. The lifestyle in general. The stealing, <laughs> the criminal behavior, right? So there's all kinds of, you know, lifestyle things that go into gambling. Um, also, people get very addicted to, you know, relationships. It could be sexual, sometimes it's sex, uh, but sometimes it's just, you know, building bonds with other people. And those bonds may be uh, with people who are not healthy for them. You know, it's always good to have relationships in recovery as far as, people who are also in recovery. And when I say relationships, I mean healthy relationships where we're not just using the person for sex. One thing we don't want to do is use people like we use our dope or use people like we used our alcohol, right? We don't use people to make us feel better. And again, these are things that we see with people, you know, they start uh, collecting people, they start collecting bets. Um, some people get addicted to working out. As you can see, Tommy and I like to work out, but there were various times in our recovery where people had to slow me down and say, hey, Nate, I know you get a high from going to the gym, you know, you feel good um, and you like to look good. However, this cannot replace going to meetings, uh, talking to your sponsor, uh, going to see your therapist, going to treatment, whatever it may be, right? So again, it's easy to get addicted to uh, other things that light up to the pleasure center in the brain, similarly to drugs and alcohol. Another thing people get addicted to is food. I mean, that's something people may not think about, but a lot of people in recovery start to gain lots of weight, right? And that's okay because some of us become malnourished. However, we get addicted to sugar, we get addicted to fat, artificial sweeteners, things like that. Um, and a lot of times these, these cross addictions, they don't make, they don't put us in a healthy state of mind because I think Tommy and I have talked about many times that recovery is all about balance. And if you're eating lots of sugar, you're staying up late watching porn, you're spending all your money gambling. I mean, you're not going to be in. You're not going to be balanced, right? I mean, that's not a balanced lifestyle. That's living just as impulsively and chaotically as somebody that's going and getting high. And it can have all kinds of negative consequences on your relationships that you're trying to heal. Like we've said many times, um, you know, addiction is not measured in 
grams or bottles of liquor, um, it's measured in broken relationships and uh, used despite negative consequences, you know? And the same thing starts to appear, these same patterns and behaviors start to appear when we get addicted to things like pornography, food. Um, some people, it sounds odd and oddly enough, people get addicted to things like vaping. Uh, and it's, I'm not saying everybody that's vaping is uh, completely obsessed, but I've seen people in treatment spend thousands of dollars on vape mods and vape juice and all these different things or spending money. That's another one. You know, people say, well, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm not using drugs and alcohol. And so in the beginning, they're like, I have all this extra money. And I, they're like, well, well, you should be saving that, right? <laughs> I, uh, it's good to, you know, spend it on yourself once in a while. Self-care is important. However, if you have a shoe collection with 800 different pairs of shoes and you got no money in your pocket, it's the same as when you were using. I mean, you may not be risking as many things, but it can still have a negative impact on your relationship. So it's very important that people, you, you realize you may be trading one addiction for another. And that's why it's so important, like Tommy's going to talk about, to not just come into these rooms and into a program or to 12-step meetings, whatever it is, or go to a therapist to say, I'm just going to stop drinking because that by itself is not going to be enough. Right, Tommy? Yep, that's exactly what I was going to talk about. Um, and as you were talking about all of that stuff, I really realized how much these two things go together. Like I said, before we started this video, we're going to talk about two different things, but it's really not. It's the same thing because, so what my original thought was, I was listening to um, a speaker the other day. I have a nap on my phone. I listen to a lot of like AA speakers. Mm -hmm. Um, and this guy just kept saying over and over and over again, he said, if the only reason you're here is to not drink, you're going to drink. Either you're going to drink or you're going to be sober and miserable. And what and, is that app called, Tommy, that you like? Uh, well, it's just a podcast, like my Apple podcast mm -hmm. app. But there's a lot of different podcasts that you can pick out um, and just listen to different AA speakers. Which are some of your favorites? I don't remember what they're called. I have to look it up. We can put it in the comments or something like that. There's I just a, thought the people might like to know. There's like 10 different ones that I listen to. So I, I told you one of them the other day, but we we'll put them in the comments. I don't remember what all the names are. We have the memories of squirrels. Exactly. But anyways, so that's what this guy just kept saying over and over and over again. You know, if the only reason you're here is to not drink, you're going to drink. And I knew what he was talking about as soon as he said it. But if I think back to when I first got sober, if he would have said that, I would have been like, the hell does that even mean? Like, of course, problem, I'm, dude. Of course I'm here because I want to not drink. Because that was my mindset going into treatment the first six times. was like, I just need to get this heroin out of my system and get through the detox yeah. and through the sickness and I'm going to be fine. Well, obviously that didn't work out because I went back to treatment over and over and over again. So basically what he meant by that was the disease of addiction or substance use disorder, or alcoholism, whatever you want to call it, it's not about the drugs or the alcohol, no. right? The core of this disease is our mental illness, our thinking, our decision making. Um, it's not just about, you know, the alcohol. You can take the alcohol and the drugs away a hundred times, but if you don't work on all of those things, your character defects, your selfishness, your self-centeredness, your fears, all those different things, if you don't put a lot of time and effort in working on those things sooner or later, the drugs or alcohol are going to come back or you're just going to be sober and miserable. And I don't know about you guys, but I did not sign up for miserable sobriety. No. So I have to work on those things every single day. And it's not fun to work on those things. A lot of times no. um, in our meeting, we had our alumni meeting last night. And one of the things that I mentioned was the first time I did a fourth and fifth step and I realized, you know, all, have, all my character defects are out here right in front of me and I have to share it with somebody and share it with God or higher mm -hmm. power of your understanding, whatever that is, mine's God. Mm -hmm. But when I had to really look at all those things and look at all the people who I thought had hurt me in my life and realize that I played a pretty big role in every single one of those situations, I was like, damn, this sucks. I was not yeah. happy. I was mad, but... You know, it's not always fun working on your character defects, no. um, but it's absolutely necessary if you want to be, you know, happy and, you know, what does it say, rocketed into the fourth dimension and, you know, to be able right. to be um, happy, joyous and free, you know, mm -hmm. those I've never thought I was going to feel that way. No. You know, they, they call it tripolar, happy, yeah. joyous and free. Exactly. Something I never thought I was going to be able to achieve. Yeah, and it's like Tommy said, if you come into the program and you just want to put down, you know, the drugs and alcohol, I mean, which is just a symptom of what we all have, right, that's going on with this, then you're going to spend your entire life chasing dopamine and serotonin, which is what we talked about at the beginning. You know, one thing you don't want to do, like Tommy said, is put down the drugs and alcohol only to get sober and be miserable and be shackled to another thing that you need or feel you need, right, 
in order to function on a daily basis or get through life. I mean, these behavioral addictions can be just as damaging. And a good example that I experienced when I got the last time I went to treatment and I've been sober ever since then, but for the first, I would say at least nine months that I was sober, mm -hmm. I spent way too much money on clothes and shoes and you know, earrings and just all this stuff right. to try to make me feel better on the outside yeah. because I still wasn't ready to address all those things on the inside. And like I've said this before, luckily for me, I had a really good sponsor at the time who called me out on stuff like that all the time. Yeah. You know, he told me what I was doing and really like sat down with me and showed it to me like, look, this is what you're doing. This is where this is going to lead you. You know, you're not working on all these things, your insecurity, your fear, your any of your, you know, emotional disorders that I had at the time. Yeah. Um, and he like, I'll never forget. We were sitting in this coffee shop and he's like, you really you're going to find out one way or the other. But this disease will manifest itself in other areas of your life if you don't really take care of it the way that, you know, this book right here tells you that it mm -hmm. needs to be taken care of. That's so. a lifelong thing, too. Like Tommy and I still have to fight every single day to keep our disease arrested, right? I mean, we have to do positive things in order to do. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, stuff, unfortunately. Right? I mean, yeah, and if, if we think it is, you know, a lot of people have this illusion that, you know, if you just take care of the drugs and alcohol, if you go to treatment one time, that everything in your life's going to be peachy, but it's not, you know, like, you know, like Tommy's talking about in these behavioral addictions, part of that is a symptom of our disease as well, where we think that if we fix everything outside of ourselves, on the surface of our bodies, and then outside of ourselves as far as what's around us, the four walls, the car the clothes, the, the people, that everything's going to be great. Well, really, what we need to change is in here. If we change in here and up here, then the rest of the things around us will will then fall into place. And that's um, Right. And that's, yeah, exactly. It, but it's a process. But, but we want that instant gratification. I'm going to go buy a pair of shoes and it's going to make me happy right now. And but. we live in a society where that, that that's the case. And it's unfortunate, right? I mean, um, nobody's saying that it's fair, but life is not fair. And, you know, having the disease of addiction isn't fair. No one, no one chooses to be a drug addict, right? Or an alcoholic. I mean, we, these things happen to us just like people who get another sickness of any kind. But when you're diagnosed with it, all you can do, all that I could do and all that Tommy could do is say, okay, I have this disease. I need to find a professional or professionals who can tell me what next steps to take to heal myself. You know, if you had cancer and you went to the doctor, and he said, well, I think you should do six months of chemo. He said, well, I think I'm going to do three. I'll do three. I'll do three <laughs> weeks of chemo, and then I think I'm going to be good. You know, the doctor would be like, well, what are you talking about, dude? And you wouldn't get a whole lot better, I wouldn't think. You know, um, in my experience, it doesn't work that way. Um, so, yeah, we just wanted to encourage you guys to, uh, you know, take a deeper look. It's not everything that's on the surface, um, and stuff won't make you happy. No, nope, the solution is not stuff. One of my favorite sayings is that I cannot fix my effed up thinking with my effed up thinking because that's what I tried to do for a long time. But yeah. my delusional, addictive thinking, it doesn't very work. It doesn't work very well. My self will. Right. Not not so great. That's why I continue to still have to ask for help every single day, not just from my higher power, but from the people around me, you know. Yeah. Nate, my sponsor, the other people that I know in the program. Well, that's the, that's what we're talking about too. Like we've lived it. We have this lived experience of being people who sought to be in recovery, but weren't willing to take the necessary steps. You know, we say this all the time. I don't know if we said it on a video recently, but you know, one of the therapists here was talking in aftercare group and or in an alumni group, and he was telling a story about someone that got kicked out of a halfway house when he was there, and. Basically, the story was the guy was in the house selling drugs and the person running the halfway house said, you have to leave. And the guy started to cry. He said, I can't leave. And he said, why can't you leave? He said, I really need this. And he said, you need to get the hell out. This is program recovery. It's not for people who need it. It's not for people who want it. It's for people who do it. And that's really what we're trying to get at is if you do it, if you do what's asked of you, you know, like Tommy and I, it took us many tries to get to the point where we realized finally that our plans weren't working. And the reason that we were failing was because we were not doing what we needed to in our recovery to be successful. We may have changed some of our habits as far as going to the gym. Uh, we started eating three meals a day um, and we're not spending our money on drugs, but we're spending it on other things. We looked for solutions outside of ourselves and it didn't work. 
You know, and we want to save people grief. And if you're somebody that's stuck in this cycle right now and you're sitting there and you're saying, Nate, Tommy, I don't think I'm ever going to get it. You know, like I've been through this five, six, seven times. That's okay. Uh, the average person, it takes them seven tries. That doesn't mean you, if you're on your, your second try, it doesn't mean you have to fail or go get high five more times. Um, and that fail is not the right word, but um, relapse is just, you know, it, it, it can be a part of recovery. It doesn't have to be. Um, it can be a part of your story. Right. Not recovery. Right. In my opinion. I agree. <laughs> and, so, and it doesn't have to be part of your story either. No, is what doesn't. I'm trying to get at. But it's part of ours. It's part of ours. It's part of most people. And the reason it happened with us so much is because we didn't take these suggestions in the beginning. We tried to replace our alcoholism and drug use with going to the gym, with women, with buying shoes, with trying to get a new car, with getting the job. Thinking that I was smarter than everybody around me. Which, yep. We came in to stop drinking and stop getting high, and it wasn't enough. And we developed backup addictions, and we made our lives harder and put people through more pain. So if you're somebody that's getting into recovery, go somewhere where you can buy into what they're telling you. Buy in 110%, give it everything you got, and, you know, don't be like us. <laughs> don't, don't have to go through it 10 times and put your family through hell. Okay, that's True. all we're trying to get at, so. Yep. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. You know, if you guys ever have a topic you want us to talk about, send us an email, shoot us a text message, whatever it is. Happy to talk about it. Yep. See you later.